Well, hello. Here, I'm going to talk about all the iconic, well, not all of them, because there were a lot of them, hundreds of iconic pub rock venues. In London. And let's get started with this myth that pub rock started. In 1971 at the Tally Ho. The Bonzo Dog Dudo Band were playing in pubs like the Tiger's Head in Catford and whatever, and the Rolling Stones and the Who were playing in pubs in Richmond and in West London, long before this mythical time in 1972 when it's supposed to have started. So what we're talking about here is the traditional era of pub rock and the traditional pub rock venues, which really was from the 1970s and 1980s, and to a certain extent, extent to the present day though in the last well covid has just about put an end to a pub rock or rock in pubs as might be a better way of talking about it it endured definitely the 90s and beyond so let's not get hung up on this thing at oh pub rock going last of 7th of april 1972 or whatever till the 23rd of November 1986, which is absolute rubbish. Pub rock is really still with us. It obviously was its peak in London and the southeast. Well, let's just say London. What were the iconic pub rock venues? And maybe I might surprise you here with some of my choices. I'm bound to forget somebody's favorite venue, so don't shoot me if I do, because as I say, there were lots of them. There was the Tally Ho, obviously, where it's supposed to have all started. <laughs> There's the Open Anchor in Islington, there's the Pipe Bull in Islington, um, which is always a secondary venue, taken over later by Vince Power and called the Powerhouse. The first, I think, of many powerhouses, the latest being the rebuilt Dingwalls at Camden Lock. Still in North London, you had the Pegasus in Green Lanes, later became Chaz and Dave's, and then it's now, I think, back to being the Pegasus again. It's the Bull and Gate at Kentish Town, you've got the Brecknock, you've got the Lord Nelson, You've got the, I'm trying to think of all the ones in North London because I normally went to the ones in South and West London, such as Fulham. There was the Greyhound in Fulham, Golden Lion at Fulham Broadway. There was the Half Moon Putney, which really started off as an Irish venue. I was slightly involved in that. In Putney as well, there's the White Lion, which um, is, is often neglected, but that was where a lot of the rougher, punky stuff played because the Half Moon was much more of a genteel venue and um, Mick, who was the landlord there, would never have punk in there. So all the bands like Crass and people like that and Flux of Big Indians, etc. Conflict played at the White Lion. There was this huge event there, which I spoke about in one of my videos, where Crazy Cavern and the Rhythm Rockers was booked, of all people, and so many people turned up that the road was blocked and it coincided with a fate across the road at the church. I think it was actually celebrating 900 years of the church or something like that, and the MP happened to be there, and the chief of the police in the area happened to be there, and they got the ride on, basically, and actually found out that there wasn't even a music license for the White Lines, so everything stopped there. You go further over, and in Nunhead, there was the Newlands Tavern. Because it is a blur, this is a long time ago, and I tend to go to these venues practically every night, if I wasn't actually working myself, because it brings me on to my own history, mainly at the Cricketers at Kennington Oval, which, before I went there in about 1982, was mainly jazz and um, smooth jazz, I think it'd be called now, like Morrissey, modern type things. I changed it, bought it more indie stuff, and more adventure stuff, and, um, became quite a big thing on the circuit because it was very handy for the West End for people who were A&R men at record companies could just hop across the bridge and then be there in about 10 minutes whereas if they had to go to somewhere like say I don't know like Finchley or whatever it would take them hours so there you go oh there's Half Moon at Herne Hill which is South East London oh yeah and there's the Thomas of Beckett down the York End Road now that is literally scratching the surface there were hundreds more like for example the ones I was involved with Apart from these I've just mentioned, were the Cocking at North End Road at Fulham, there was the John Bull at Chiswick, there's the Green Man at Stratford. I've just lost count. And that's basically just as I say, scratching the surface. I'm just going to interrupt myself for a couple of minutes. Don't worry, it won't take long. Just to say, if you like this, it really helps me if you could press the like button and subscribe. That You have no idea how much that helps me. And if you possibly could, watch it to the end. I know it's not easy. 
but that would be great thank you now back to what i was saying about pub rock which is my favorite venue to go to now, that's a good question well i'll tell you the ones i didn't particularly like going to first and i'll tell you my favorite a bit further on actually the whole load i've mentioned like there was the windsor castle in harrow road i didn't like going there believe it or not because they had strippers on i found that if you went to a pub that had strippers on it brought in a certain type of person that didn't really go along with the sort of bands that i would want to go and watch it always there's always be some sort of conflict at the bar or outside or something so i didn't like i've never been one for um, conflict frankly although the band i used to actually quite like the punk band i didn't like going too far I tend to live in South East London, Deptford, Lewisham, or West London, Fulham, Putney. So if, so if I ventured up to, I don't know, the George, I, I missed out the, some of the ones I worked with, well, the George Roby in Finsbury Park, as the Weavers. So many gigs, I just think, even ones I was involved with, and also with Malcolm, who was the guy that really was the moving force behind the Roby and the Lady Owen Arms, and then he also put on gigs at the Fox in the Green Lanes, which is Palmer's Green. And again, you see, this is, if, if we spent all day doing this, I would still not think of all the places. That's how big this was. It was at like a few pubs. Oh, in 1971, eggs are crazy paid at the Italy home because it's the first non-jazz band to ever play there. And then 10 years later, punk had killed off the pub rock scene, which is all rubbish. Punk was all part of it. It used to be like, I can remember going to the, I mentioned the Nashville or the Red Cow. If I keep on, I'll just keep on thinking of it names. So probably best that I stop. Well, thank you for watching. Sorry to speak rambly, but that's the nature of the thing. Pub rock was not like a cut and dry sort of thing. It was, um, much more hit and miss. You'd turn up and maybe the band would be loading their gear in, you have to get out of the way or you'd help them. Because that's what we liked about then, because they wouldn't get paid much. Sometimes you paid to get in, sometimes it was free, whatever. So it's all very haphazard and that was part of its charm. That there were no big stars. You could still talk to everybody that played. It was accepted and expected that the acts would be there that you could talk to them, ask them questions, that sort of thing. And that I think is the big reaction to this stadium rock, the big music business thing at the time. Big bands like Genesis and people like that that were so aloof played miles away you could barely see them as a speck at Wembley. Pub rock was a reaction to that. We could stand in the audience and you get covered in Wilco Johnson's sweat. Isn't that an appealing idea? Well I've just come to the point in the editing part of it when I realised I didn't actually tell you where, what my favourite venue was. But Well that's simply because I didn't really have one. And another thing when I was watching this back and um, looking at what I'd said I realised that I didn't really express how diverse everything was was how it wasn't just like venues opened and venues closed it was like a constantly evolving and also venues changed one venue would open that then it would be one person who would be booking the bands and they'd have a certain style and then they'd go and then someone else would come and they'd change the style sometimes it was the landlord of the pub that booked the bands but most times it was somebody like me who was like a specialist music promoter who was brought in because the most landlords in my experience especially of pub rock venues didn't actually like the music much so they would rather it wasn't happening because quite often these venues were Irish venues and they were putting on maybe punk bands or whatever and the landlord and his wife definitely would not like the sort of stuff they were putting on but they had to put on what they did because that's what brought in people so I didn't really have a favourite venue. The places I like going to, like Nashville, is a very good place to go and watch bands because of its size and shape. It was a f Fuller's pub, so that was good, so you used to get nice ale. It, it all depended on who was playing and what what I felt like, and but it was, so I don't really have a favourite one. Sorry about that. Back to the editing, excuse me. Thank you for watching. If you like it, like it. Subscribe. Goodbye. See you next time.